Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. Throughout the third season of Star Trek Enterprise, we got to learn about the Military Assault Command Operations, or MAKO, a United Earth organization that assisted the NX-01 Enterprise during the Zindi Crisis in 2153. But what exactly do we know about this elite tactical organization? Today we'll be looking into the history of the MAKO, so let's warp into it. The Military Assault Command organization, known as MAKO, was an elite branch of the United Earth military prior to the founding of the United Federation of Planets. Their tactics and technology were cutting edge, being much more advanced than that afforded by the United Earth Starfleet at the time. However, as an Earthbound organization, most of their experience came from simulations conducted on Earth or within the solar system. That isn't to say they weren't extremely well trained, as they were considered the best of the best. Their skills included zero-g and rifle training on Jupiter Station, survival training on Luna, and extensive EVA experience on the Janus Loop, presumably located on one of Saturn's moons, called Janus. During the events of Izindi incident, which started with Izindi Council launching a preemptive strike against Earth using a weapon to kill 7 million people on the planet, this however was only a prototype with a weapon capable of destroying the entirety of Earth in development. With the knowledge of this, the crew of the NX-01 Enterprise set their course for the Delphi Expanse to stop this weapon before it could destroy their home. As Starfleet was not a military organisation, Captain Jonathan Archer of the Enterprise requested a detachment of Mako soldiers from a man who oversaw them, General Casey. The detachment of Makos assigned to the Enterprise was led by Major Jay Hayes and would see deployment in numerous types of missions with extreme proficiency, from rescue operations to even repelling borders. During the Enterprise's time in the Delphi Expanse, the Mako soldiers showed how capable they were and continued to serve on the Enterprise, assisting in its shipboard functions, most notably security. They helped defend the Enterprise from borders and provide security to high valuable figures such as ambassadors that were ferried by the starship. Now, after the conclusion of the Zindi incident, Captain Archie even recommended that Captain Enrique Hernandez should have a squad of Mako serving on the new NX-02 starship with how useful they'd been during the NX-01's mission into the Delphic Expanse. The Zindi incident was not the only campaign in which the soldiers of Mako were deployed, with the Mako soldiers being utilised throughout the Earth-Romulan War. Now, we don't know much about the Earth-Romulan War due to the Star Trek Enterprise series unfortunately being cancelled before it reached this era, but we can explore parts of it through extended lore. However, we do know that the Earth Romulan War started in 2156 and ended four years later in 2160. We also know that during this conflict, the two sides never saw each other face to face, so the use of Mako personnel was probably limited to security and tactical positions aboard Starfleet ships. Though Starfleet did express a concern at one point about transferring Mako soldiers to planet side combat and how they'd do that. When the United Federation of Planets was eventually founded in 2161, Mako was disbanded, presumably alongside the United Earth military. However, we do know that soldiers within Mako were given ranks within Starfleet, most notably as Balthazar Edison, seen in the Kelvin timeline film Star Trek Beyond, who became captain of the USS Franklin. However, as we see in Star Trek Beyond, some Makos found difficulty in moving from military positions to Starfleet, with Balthazar Edison actually resenting Starfleet for giving him a captaincy. They are trained for one thing, and then they are told they are now obsolete and should do something else, with Starfleet continuing to remove itself from being a military organisation. This must have been quite hard for Mako soldiers, and you can see why some of them might not have liked the new idea. Now you may be asking why a character seen in the Kelvin timeline relates to the Prime timeline. Well, the Kelvin timeline only started in the year 2233, when Venerada arrived due to a temporal anomaly. So all the events before 2233 had happened in both the Prime and Kelvin timelines, therefore the USS Franklin and Captain Edison exist in the Prime timeline. I wonder if we'll ever see him again, maybe in a short track, I'm sure Idris Elba would be up for it and I'd love to see him back in some sort of Romulan War spin-off. There's also a Mirror Universe version of Mako whose patch included a skull instead of a Prime Universe's Mako Shark. They all seem to be much more aggressive, as is the nature of the Terran Empire, and it had to have been involved in Starfleet operations from a much earlier time, presumably due to the much more aggressive stance of Starfleet in the Mirror Universe. Now in the Star Trek Extended Canon, there was an event which I wanted to talk about quickly. As I mentioned earlier, Captain Archer of the NX-01 Enterprise recommended to Captain Hernandez of the NX-02 Columbia that she recruit some Mako soldiers for the ship's crew. Captain Hernandez did eventually follow through his advice in 2156, around the outbreak of the Romulan War, 
and a detachment of soldiers under the command of Major Stephen Foyle were assigned to his starship, though this decision would actually prove fatal in the near future. We'll be talking more about the fate of the NX-2 in a future video, but for now I'll summarise it. In 2156, the Columbia was attacked by a Romulan starship while escorting a mining convoy to Earth. Though the ship survived the engagement through superior tactics, they were left crippled with the loss of major systems like the subspace communications and a destroyed warp drive, leaving them essentially stranded beyond repair. The Columbia lost many of her crew members including half of a Mako contingent on board. Using impulse power to reach a nearby planet, several crew members and Mako officers staged a mutiny against Captain Hernandez and her orders to cooperate with the planet's intelligent species known as the Kalar. The Mako detachment commander, Major Fall, assumed command of the Columbia and attempted to leave the star system which triggered a chain of events, resulting in the creation of an unstable subspace tunnel and the destruction of the planet. Tragically, the Mako officers and all aboard the NX-2 Columbia were killed due to hyperphasic radiation. Though Captain Hernandez and a few personnel would survive due to being off the starship at the time, but we'll explore the future of this in another video coming soon. So that wraps up our video on the Mako organisation for Star Trek. What did you think of these elite commandos when they first turned up in Star Trek Enterprise? I personally love them. Do let us know via the comments section below. You can also actually become part of Mako in the MMO Star Trek Online. If you've been playing it over the last couple of years, you probably would know about that. I personally use some of the Mako equipment on my character, but there you go. For more Star Trek news, lore, and more information, then make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube. You can also now follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or come join our Discord server. If you're looking to read some of the latest news articles and videos maybe are not your thing, we've opened up our brand new website, there'll be a link down below. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.